It just goes to show what a couple of brew days back to back does to a man. Got home last night. Uh, what time would we say? Seven ish. I think, uh, well not, I got home before seven, uh, but about seven-ish, I took myself off upstairs, laid on the bed, phew, clonk out till uh, half seven this morning. <laughs> Barmy, just gone. So uh, the vlog for today is not up yet, so I'm going to drop Gemma off at work and I'm going to come back home, edit the vlog, and then we'll shoot back down to work and uh, tinker with the kit and whatever else the day has in store for us it's bloody beautiful I tell you now I'm not really one for football but I think I'm going to sit down and watch the England match tonight with Dominic because he's getting into it so it's good for him I think well we're in folks we're in the unit as is to be expected and because we've now done one two three four brews on the kit I thought it'd be a good chance to take all the pieces, all the components out of the kit, inspect them, see how they've held up, uh, give them a clean, of course, uh, give them a soak for things such as the ball valves, lever valves, soak them in the uh, in a bit of paracetic acid, remove all the gaskets, all that kind of jazz. Basic maintenance that you really should be doing once a week anyway. Um, I know a lot of brewers do it once a month or once a quarter, not me once a week if I can squeeze it in. Um, certain things on the hot side aren't that, uh, aren't that important, for instance, on the boil kettle, if you can't get your valves off every week, it's not gonna matter too much, but you really should be inspecting them as often as possible. But further downstream where the fermenters are, literally you have to take those to pieces between every batch because otherwise you will get found out. So we've got all the stuff soaking down here. So you can see I've taken all of the O-rings out of the connectors on the silicon hose, put all the stainless steel fittings and whatnot in there. And then on this side, I've removed most of the fittings off the boil kettle. I'm just about to pull the elements out. They look clean, but I can pull them out easy enough. So we'll do that now and just give them a quick inspection. And I'll do the same for the thermo probe socket and the float level indicator socket just to make sure everything is functioning as it should. They're in perfect nick, they look great. The only uh, minor issue that I have is there's a little bit of a surface film on the bottom of the element where I can't spray it from the top and obviously the spray ball, as it's cascading down the tank, isn't gonna be able to spray up on the bottom of the element, but it's literally nothing, it's not burnt on, it's not cruddy. I'm just gonna basically get a scourer and some water wipe it off job done nothing to worry about i'm dead pleased there's no crap in the sockets or anything like that they look really nice and clean so another positive well i've just taken the float level indicator out and this is the temp probe and as you can see on there we are clean as a whistle that's bloody lovely bloody lovely so we'll pop him back in. The CIP is doing its job for this kind of thing. And of course, when I've cleaned the elements down, I've done it, look, they're up here. They're up there resting. There was literally nothing on them. Wipe with a sponge, gone. I reckon if I'd have run the CIP another two minutes longer, it would have all been gone. So it's, Looking really good. I'm a lucky boy again, folks. People are treating me more than perhaps I deserve, I don't know. So you see in front here, we've got two different packages just arrived today. These three home brews came in first. 
and uh, they're from RJ Brewing. Any comfortable chance? Then I'll begin. He says, thanks for keeping me entertained with your shenanigans in the brewery build. That's been good to watch. You have given me lots of ideas how to uh, build my new brewery. A one barrel system in my garage and that's plenty of tank for me and about as much electricity as I can pull without a three phase board. Anyway, in the box, as you can see, is three bottles of my version of the Shark PA called Solero. One is a spare and the other one is for Tom if you get to see him soon, so don't get too thirsty. Tom and Froggy are here Saturday, so we'll be having these on camera for you, mate. Uh, I entered this into a homebrew comp that's one mile, that One Mile End Brewery was hosting and it came third out of 68. I hope it's travelled well in this heat and still tastes as fresh as it was out of my keg. The beer is 5.5, 41 IBUs, Galaxy, Azaka, Mosaic. London Ale Yeast 3. Well, thanks a lot, Rayna. We'll be enjoying them, like I said, on the weekend. And then I've been sent a Kaleidoscope India Pale Ale and a Pupa, I think, Pupa, Pupa, Juicy Pale Ale, both from Vibrant Forest. We've actually had the Kaleidoscope on keg in the brew shed. It's fantastic. Now, this has come from a good buddy of mine called Sandra. She sent it across. Here are two of my favourite beers from my local brewery, Vibrant Forest, run by Kevin Robinson, down south in Leamington, New Forest. Cheers, Sam. Thank you very much, Sandra. I will be enjoying these on my own. So we've got these tables put together. Lid needs to go on that one. I've got another one as well of these, it's on the bench. I've lost the gallows bracket, so I'm gonna have to fab some up, I think. But first, I wanna nip home and make sure I've got some beer in the fridge for football, and then we'll pick the kids up. So I'm home early again today. Not too early though, it's only just gone uh, it's half past four. So I've decided, because football's on, I don't normally bother, but it's the World Cup, let's get in the, uh, on the bandwagon. <laughs> I fell off the fucking wagon a few times. So I want to try this uh, pupa that uh, Sandra sent me. It looks really nice, it's 4.5%, so we're going to get it in the glass. Oh my gosh. Hopefully I'm not too washed out on the uh, the backlit window here. I've just tried adjusting the ISO settings on the camera, so it should look all right. Oh, I can smell it from here. Vibrant Forest are an excellent brewery. We've had their kaleidoscope on keg at the brew shed before, and I must say it went down an absolute storm. I can see bits of... Uh, yeast, maybe some hot particles floating around in here, very New England IPA style, New England Session IPA, it says a juicy pale ale, I uh, wonder if we've got the hops in here, I think I did see them somewhere, I'm sure I saw them somewhere but I can't quite see them now so we'll just get straight in. Oh, that is Fan Dabby Dozy pet. So, talking of excellent beer, before I go and tune out for the day, we will be back tomorrow with a slight hangover, I'm sure. But before I go, I just want to discuss or briefly touch up on the fact as to why I'm not trying to rescue this beer. And there's been quite a lot of conversation in the comments below 
leave one if you think you can add to the conversation a little bit. Uh, but a lot of people are saying why don't I try and rescue the beer, brew up another batch that's got very low or no IBU content, blend them, all these uh, these remedies, adding lactose for instance, all these remedies that would work in theory and they would work if it was a home brewed batch for instance. The reason I'm not going down that road is because this is of course a commercial brewery as we all know. I've put a lot of time and effort and money into getting it up and running and of course people already know what my beers are like because of all the awards that I won with the Idle Valley brand. People understand uh, what to expect and if I start cutting corners like trying to salvage a batch of beer just to get it on the bar you very quickly get found out. It's not something I'd do commercially anyway. Uh, I've been known to judge recipes up to improve them but uh, I've never tried to rescue a bad batch and sell it. I'd much rather just tip it and start again. Your reputation is worth far more than a few kilograms of hops, a few sacks of malt and a day's work because it'll take you a heck of a lot more time and money to build it back up. If you get found out taking these shortcuts and it feels like cheating to me if you do something like that. And whilst I would do it if it was homebrew, because I wouldn't want to tip it and I do hate waste. And if I had space I might age it or sell it as a different line because the beer's not off, it just is too bitter for me. So if we had tank space for instance or we had cask space, I could stick it in a cask and put it in the corner of the cold room, leave it there for six weeks and come back to it. It might be great. But we only stand with three fermenters, we don't have any casks yet. It's more important for me to get the best I can out of those fermenters if I'm going to be tying up that fermenting space. Which is why I've decided to open the valve, let it go on the floor. So uh, yeah, that's batch number one down the drain, sort of anticipated it. You always get these wrinkles in the road before you take on anything big like this. Uh, just pick yourself up and carry on. I, I, I'm really not that sort of beat up about it, if I'm honest. I'm really not that beat up about it. The only thing that I think I've let myself down on is uh, something that Hover Dog Brewery pulled me up on in the comments recently as well. And that is all this steam coming out of the chimney and I've not once said chooch it. Well, we shall remedy that when Tom and Froggy come over on Saturday as we brew the Coconut Shy PA for the first time on Harrison's Brewery Kit. Now, I'm sure it'll be on Froggy's channel and I'm sure it'll be on Tom's channel. It'll definitely be on my channel. And that's one you really don't want to miss out on. We'll see you tomorrow for the build-up. Choo-choo!